this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Simone Craft to give the invitation. Technology. 
As Allie and Noah will show you, students must learn the hand-eye coordination that is needed to use a mouse for the beginning steps of manipulating the keyboard. At this stage, learning username and numbers and passwords is a challenge, especially if you know your login. <laughs> um, in first grade, um, technology allows the user to personalize their learning experience. Megan, Michael, and AJ will show how first grade is now using a program called Seesaw. This platform can give students more options beyond the traditional essay, poster, or report. It can take a boring lesson to fun or a fun lesson to more memorable. It allows the students who may not like to talk or share a way to show what they're learning. Second grade, students are teched up their weather report by integrating research, Google Classroom, and green screen applications. Students were then filmed on a green screen to create a real weather report. Carly, Delinda, Salem, and Ella will show you how they use Google Classroom daily for lessons and research. Third grade will show you how they extend their science lesson into technology class. Students studied the planets and did research in the regular classroom and created standard posters on their planets. Then in technology, they created a digital comic book through an application called Storyboard. Nirvati, Kylie, and Thomas will show you how they were able to be a tour guide and present facts on the planets of their choice. Fourth grade, we're integrating it with art. YouTube is just not for checking out the latest Minecraft or Fortnite cheats. YouTube can be used to show examples on how to create. It brings the artist into the classroom. A couple examples, students watched an artist create paper quilling and then created their own. Students learned about Alexander Calder's wire sculptures and then they combined art with a stem to create their own wire sculptures. Fourth and fifth grade also Skyped with the North Carolina Museum of Art for a lesson on interpreting science and weather and art. Luna, Chloe, Lucas, and Andrea will demonstrate how YouTube can be used to acquire hands-on skills. Our fifth graders Use epic online books, library books, and NC Wise Owl to research six main, six main body systems. They chose the systems they thought was most important and then researched it more thoroughly. The end project was their choice. Many chose to integrate and involve technology. Wade and Nick chose to use iMovie and create a how-to video in Iraq. PE and health. Even those classes are involved in technology. Grace and Madeline will show how they researched healthy food choices to create a brochure through Google Classroom and Google Docs. All right, now we're inviting you all to personalize your learning. We have um, every grade and PE set up back there, and we ask that you just, you can wander around and check out how brand new you'd like to do. All right, thank you. I hope the board enjoyed the presentations. Um, like I said, this is just, this is normal every day things that the students are doing in their classrooms. We did no special prep for it other than making these boards and getting it together. So this is the kind of work the students are doing every day. Um, I'd like to thank the parents and the students for coming on out. We appreciate your time this evening. Um, if the kids want to leave now, um, they can go. It's a school night. So I'm sure you all have homework in that. If not, you are more than welcome to stay. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Gorsi. Um, if, if you can, would the students like to come up and tell us your name and what grade you're in? Y'all did a fantastic job tonight and we're very proud of you. Come on up and line up right here. My name is Carly Peters. I am in second grade.
My name is Madeline and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Grace and I'm in fifth grade. My name is Kylie and I'm in third grade. My name is Noah and I'm in kindergarten. My name is Thomas and I'm in third grade. My name is Megan and I'm in first grade. My name is Michael and I'm in sec I mean first grade. Thank you again. Thank you, Ms. Forza. At this time, we're going to ask for the approval of the agenda, and I would like to make the motion that we exclude item H, which concerns our capital outlay budget for the 2019-2020 year. Uh, we're going to have a private uh, closed session concerning this, and discuss some of these items um, in detail, so that's why I would like to exclude that from the agenda. But other than that, uh, do I have a motion that we approve the agenda with that exclusion? Do I have a second? Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. At this time we have our public comment session. Ms. Jones, did anyone sign up? We did not have anyone sign up for public comment tonight. At this time, we have our student board member reports. We would like to start with Keelan. Okay, so first up, we have Mohawk Elementary. The Spring Book Fair is currently underway at NES this week with Pete the Cat making a royal appearance at drop off this morning. The NES Math 2014 performed well this year, with five of the members placing the top 16 in the county. Now, I have joined us for an anti bullying assembly last week in which Jim Vicenius came to talk for a brief to five students about strategies for resisting bullying. Upcoming events this month include the Battle of the Books, competition being held at Briggs Elementary on April 11th, pictures of the Easter Bunny on April 15th, and the AG Day on April 18th. I'm in line Jarvisburg, Illinois. JBS is the place to be. We celebrated our Title I reading night with a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory themed night because of 300 plus folks who came out before the Chocolate Factory for one night only. JBS also hosted its second annual lunch and learn event where parents were able to spend some of their time in the classroom learning alongside their child. Afterwards, parents joined their students for lunch. It was a great day event, and JBS uh, students also enjoyed the Silver Trout Art Assembly and the Andy Foley Assembly, hosted by Greenville Elementary. We also enjoyed the talents of our students at our annual JBS talent show because of comedians, dancers, young musicians, and performers. It was a great time by all, and as we are for spring, lots will be happening, so stop in for a then in Central Elementary. Central had a great end to March with our PTO sponsored science fair. Thanks to the students and staff who heard about high school and JP Napper from college for judging our projects. JP Napper and Kurt High students have also been synergizing with our staff at Central to provide them tutoring to our K 12 students during the three periods in class. This program is coordinated through our principal intern, Cam Robinson. Central was excited to participate in our district activities this month, including Battle of the Books, AG Day, and Special Olympics. And then I go to Shawbara Elementary. So Shawbara Elementary has a great read across America. We come up with a successful fairy tale. A huge shout out to Mrs. Harsh and our Math 2014 as they swept the Final Four competition. April was a busy month at SEO. April 16th, we will take our fifth graders to tour Moyak Mo Middle School and learn about their transition there. The awards assembly for the third time use will be held April 17th, and any day for third grade will be April 18th. We hope everyone has a safe and fun spring break. So then I pass it off to Sydney. Awesome. Our Duke Science Night on March 14th was a huge success. 
April will be busy month. We will be hosting the Battle of the Books competition on April 11th. We will have our third round of the Award Assembly on April 12th. The Coast Guard will be visiting Greg on April 15th. With our fifth graders, we'll have a visit from the band and choir. Also, the three wax museum will be from 9 to 11 on April 18th. Our PBIS report day will be on April 19th. We are looking forward to spring break. Not silent elementary. The activities and opportunities are blooming on the island. The third round of these awards assembly is coming Monday, April 8th. Fourth and fifth grade students will be participating in the Battle of Books on April 11th. The annual walkathon will be held on Friday, April 12th. Third graders will be participating in AG Day, also known as Ag Day, on April 18th. And we hope everyone has a safe and fun filled spring break, April 22nd through the 26th. Next up, we want to encourage the County Middle School. As we approach spring break, learning at CCMS is full swing. Our students and staff enjoyed the bullying speaker last week. Spring to the arts was a huge success. We are grateful for the varying opportunities our students have to display their various talents. Speaking of talent, CCMS will be hosting our first Greater Scott Talent Show the week after spring break. Auditions are currently underway. Mr. Letornez. Letorno. Second semester, our students will be hosting a wax museum on Wednesday, April 3rd. Stop by to check out these artists. We are excited to have many students and staff participate in the Special Olympics on April 12th at Hopkinton High School. We hope everyone has a restful and relaxing spring break. I'll now pass on now. Thank Designation 
at its regional inspection last week. The unit will now be nominated for Distinguished Unit of Merit and Lieutenant Colonel Keith Grimes and Sergeant M. Salida Graham are also being nominated for Outstanding Instructor Awards. Our dedicated cadets will be hosting a Red Cross blood drive on campus next Monday and close last week with a 14 mile walk in memory of those who perished in the Bataan Death March. The concert band and win ensemble, under the guiding hand of Lee Burgess, hosted the first annual Northeast Region MPA, which is Music Performance Assessment, last week and played to superior and excellent ratings. Our annual spring musical, Guys and Dolls, under the direction of Buddy White, is slated for April 12th to 14th in the Middle School Auditorium. So proud of FBLA member Taylor McCarthy, who was elected as 2019-2020 state president late last month. Her sponsor is business teacher Jim Dorch. English teachers Amy Hardy, Katie Page, and Valerie Person just learned their proposal to present at the annual NCTE, which is the National Council of Teachers of English, convention in November has been accepted. Congratulations to our cheerleaders, Leah McLaughlin and Anna Walls, recently named All-Region. Anna went on to earn All-State honors. Our state championship banner for volleyball recently arrived and is now proudly displayed in the Griffin Gymnasium. Spring athletics are also underway and planning, playing to stand out reviews. Our hunter safety team, led by Agriculture Director Daniel Meeks, excelled at this weekend's event and is poised for potential regional competition. <laughs> yeah, congratulations on being able to read it off your phone. That's, that's a feat within itself. Um, Superintendent Stefanik would like to update us on field trip request. Thank you, Ms. Etheridge, and fellow board members. We've got uh, two uh, field trips listed and one that's not listed that I think you'll be excited to hear about. Um, we've got a softball tournament uh, that will take place uh, April 19th and 20th uh, in Greenville, uh, and then the Science Olympiad uh, towards the end of the month on uh, April 26th and 27th in Cary, uh, North Carolina. The one that's not on the agenda, that's a special one, uh, actually has to do with our host school uh, right here at Knott's Island. Um, they uh, put in a request to go to the Whalehead Club and the Currituck Lighthouse and Wildlife Center in Kerala. So you say, okay. Uh, but it would take uh, over two hours to get there from here, and so they have uh, found boat drivers. Uh, to take them from Knott's Island to uh, Kerala uh, by boat. Um, we, uh, of course, uh, superintendents get nervous anytime that uh, you travel a different way uh, to field trips, so we always check with our attorneys. And, uh, and so uh, the attorney said uh, that uh, as long as all the safety precautions are in place and there are life jackets being worn by the students, that uh, have a nice trip. Uh, so this is 20 so, minutes that way? Uh, 45, it says on the, on the paper. Yeah. But they said, well, they're, they're not just going to take the boat over. Uh, while they're on the boat, they're going to uh, uh, have an educational trip. They're going to study science ecosystems uh, while they're on the way, estuaries and salt marshes. Uh, and so they have education on the way over, education while they're over there uh, in Kerala, and then uh, uh, a nice ride back and a, a memorable field trip for uh, the folks, uh, fifth graders, uh, at, uh, at Knott's Island. So uh, if the board doesn't have any objections, my approval was in pencil, uh, and so if uh, you're okay with it, we'll make the approval in ink, and uh, they can uh, finish planning their field trip. That sounds great. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the three field trips discussed by Superintendent Stavonic this evening. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. The 2019-20 school calendar. We do need action on the approval. Do I have a motion that we approve the school calendar? Okay. We still have to have a motion. Do we have a motion? Any motion on the floor? Do I have a second? I second it. Any discussion? Um, well, 
this will be, I guess, the second year when it is likely approved, but I just want to state for the record that um, I'm not in favor of early release Fridays at the high school, every Friday. I don't believe that uh, two halves equal a whole. And I also think under our current budget um, situation, we're having to spend um, more of our uh, resources running extra buses to accommodate that or an extra bus run. I personally um, would prefer to see if we got, uh, I don't know how many days are here totaled up. I didn't total them up, but let's just say there's 20. I'd rather see um, 10 full days and 10 no days than 20 half days. I personally think um, that it's less uh, educational value and I think it costs the district more money. So for that, um, I'm against the uh, high school calendar. However, I'm in favor of the um, K through eight and the JP Knapp Early College. Um, but anyhow, that's my discussion. Okay. So, J yes, JP Knapp, they have the same Fridays, half days. So you're okay with JP Knapp, but not the high school? JP Knapp is a odd uh, situation in that they get a lot of state funding um, that the high school doesn't. And um, they have a lot of off-campus uh, uh, where they're going to JP Knapp. They're at COA getting two credits for one class where sometimes they're getting a math credit for the high school and a math credit for college while they're over at COA. Um, I'm we have really, dual enrollment really, though at the high school really too. Of either, but in that situation, because there's so many kids off the campus already, um, I'm willing to go along with that. Um, but I, I just don't believe that uh, it's a good fit for the high school. All right, I'd like to ask, since our, our student board members are in the schools on a daily basis, can I get your opinion on this discussion? I understand where Mr. Cock is coming from with the no educational purpose of the half days, but this also allows our teachers to have more development. And also on teacher days, they use that time to help benefit the students and it allows our clubs to get a lot more together and um, schedule more activities for them, even if they are within the school, not even just field trips. I know personally my clubs this Friday alone are producing an art piece for our school that will then promote recycling among our school and we're able to do that because of our Friday half days. And I also know at this time there's a math teacher always available every half day at the school that can help with any math and you can go there for tutoring. And I also know that this is used as extra credit time in a few of my classes, which I believe is beneficial because I get a lot of help during that time. Uh, I more or less just agree with her points, although I have not taken advantage of the, this uh, time at the end of the day. I know that students do indeed, and that teachers do as well. It serves three primary purposes. It, it gives students extra tutoring time, it gives uh, teachers extra planning time, and it also uh, serves as kind of just a winding down of the week that allows students to a little bit extra time to get stuff done that they, to, to finish their week of school, basically. If I could just follow up on that, please. I want to make sure you understand I have two points. One is the educational component, which I believe two halves in this situation doesn't equal a whole, right? That's why I'm saying I'd rather have full days and the other half of them no days. The second component is the funding. The bus formula that we have by the state, if we don't adhere to 100%, we pay what amounts to a penalty. It's a bus efficiency formula. We're trying to have that change currently with a house bill that's been put forward under HB 97. However, when we're running extra runs or we're not running the capacity, if we take money out of our local dollars to try to uh, reduce uh, ride times, basically increase the um, quality, if you will, so that some of the kids, um, for example, when Central aren't having an hour and a half to two hour bus rides, Central Elementary, 
In order to invest local dollars, we still get penalized by the state when we're not performing at 100%. Right now we're paying on the upwards of $180,000 of the penalty. By running an extra bus route to accommodate this, rather than not running a bus route on some Fridays, we're paying more money in a penalty. So I want people to understand is there are some possible benefits. I personally don't believe they outweigh the negatives. And that's why I'm against it. I feel like you make some good points, Mr. Craddock. Um, to me, since this is the first year that we have implemented, implemented this at the high school, mirroring what is working at J.P. Knapp, I want to give it a full year, and then I want to look at the academic performance to see if those scores are a direct uh, impact from the after-school tutoring that we provide on Fridays. Some people have the misconception that they get out half a day on Fridays and it's a free-for-all. They get to go home, they get to do whatever they want. That is not the case. This is for learning, for extra help if you need it in a certain area, whether it be math, science, whatever that may be. So I want the public to know it's not just getting out half a day. Those, those students that want to participate in clubs, it's a great opportunity for them to stay after school and have the transportation provided uh, to, to get home safe. I know it's hurting us as far as uh, the formula that they use to give us the funds, but to me, I'm trying to look at the bigger picture. If it educates our children and it makes a positive impact, then I'm all for it. Um, I agree very much with what you said. Um, I don't attend the high school, so I don't really know exactly what goes on during the high school half days, but I know that at NAP it's something that's really important to me and a lot of other people that go there. Um, I have been tutored on Fridays. I have been the tutorer on Fridays. In fact, I'm going in this Friday to work with um, the English teacher, Mr. Martin, helping some kids rewrite their essays. Um, and I know that that time is really important to them. It helps us catch up with our work and it helps us study and it helps us do all these things because college is hard. Even if you're taking online classes, it's hard. And being there and being able to have that time away from home, just somewhere that you can put your mind to your schoolwork and you know that you're there for that purpose, it's really, really helpful. And I think that all in all that it benefits so many people that even if we have a little bit of the consequence with the buses, <laughs> that, um, <laughs> that it's worth it in the end. And sometimes I just feel like the Fridays are just a break. Because um, I go to CUA full time. I'm there four days a week. I don't go up. I don't have school on Fridays at all. Um, I know that I can go to NAP if I need help and having that ability is great to me. Um, sometimes I feel like if I did have school on Fridays, that it would just be too much for me, you know? <laughs> um, I feel like having that Friday, even if you do go home and just sleep in, that having that mental health break is also just as important as it is to be there and be tutoring and be learning more. Um, so you've heard the student part of it and the benefits to the students, but I want to make sure that everyone understands that we're just not doing this because we think that the students need a break or they need to be able to be in clubs. We're doing it because the teachers need that opportunity and time, not just to plan for themselves, but to, to collaborate with each other. Ms. Dowdy, can you add anything that I, I know we, I hate to put you on the spot like that, but um, I know we've talked about how some of the math teachers never see each other or hardly ever. Can you kind of just touch on that just a little bit? Sure. When we started in 2008 at the early college level, it was part of our design to open up a school where we provided time for collaboration among staff as well as time for remediation and tutoring and those types of things. Because about that time, we stopped running buses for late buses for tutoring and for clubs and those types of things to take place after school. So as I came up through the early college model with, uh, at J.P. Knapp, we saw lots of success, really about the ability for teachers to collaborate. When you get into a traditional high school model, teachers are kind of in silos. I teach English, I teach math, and there's not a lot of teaming. And in small schools and elementary and middle schools, they're usually teamed together. 
When you get to a high school, that doesn't happen. So when I switched over to the comprehensive high school, that's one of the things as we talked about, would it be something that would help us academically? It's really about providing time. When teachers have time to do those types of things, we see the benefits for students. And then when we can provide students with extra academic or enrichment opportunities, we see that benefit as well. So again, the high school has some of its highest scores in the past several years as at the end of the end of course results. Um, I think it's starting to pay dividends. I think if you survey staff, and of course students, but you have to understand every student's gonna say they want half a day exactly. off. Um, so you know, if you survey staff, I think you're finding that they're, they're finding a lot of worth in the ability to collaborate, to get professional development as a staff, to be able to network vertically so that they know what middle schoolers are coming out with so that they're ready as high schoolers and what they can do as high, uh, high school teachers to help that transition. Um, there's a lot that's going on that I think is a benefit. Yes, it comes at a price. And I think when we try to do what's best for kids, sometimes it always doesn't fit in the red tape boxed in rules that exist. That, that's exactly right. And I, I understand your concern, but I also know that our job is to take care of the money, but the ultimate is that we want education for the kids that's going to be um, the best that we can give them. I just want to touch on a few of the benefits that I've seen and you know just as NAP has a lot of students going to COA our traditional high school now has that as well um, so we have a lot of students going to COA on a daily basis um, I think it is very valuable for the teachers to have adequate planning time they have talked about how they can just do so much more for their students Today I dropped in to see, I, I'm not sure what her title is, I call her the liaison between our students and setting up work experiences. And she shared some photos and some journals with me of two students. One is working with fire and EMT and he gets all of this experience on Friday afternoons and was just just the reports she's getting from the people he works with are amazing. And, now, because of this experience, he thinks he wants to go into that when he leaves school. So it, it's a, a great chance for the students to experiment with what they want to be when they get out of school. Um, there was another one that had an experience working with diesel mechanics, and he just didn't want to leave. They said they had to make him leave. He wanted to stay there all the time. So she shared a couple of good things. She's got 49 students, I believe she said, signed up for the next go-round that she'll be working with to participate in, in this. And, and I, too, am concerned about the bottom line dollar. But um, as Ms. Kraft said, I think, you know, we have to look at what's going to provide our students with a good experience, too. Sydney? Although I understand the financial boundary, of course, I'd also like to say that I am enrolled in three AP classes, which allow me my college credit and my high school credit right now. And with this time, I know each one of my AP teachers is very open to always helping me. And when I go in there, I see the COA students also in there getting help from our teachers at our school when they're struggling in their classes during this time. And not only is this a time for the AP classes to go and get that extra push, but my AP Lit teacher not only assists my AP class during that time, but she uses this as a time to teach us strategies on how to do better on our ACT and SAT before the test date approaches so that we can succeed in after high school. And I also am in the running for the internships next year, and I know that this would be a great time for me to build up that time. Thank you. Any further discussion? I just want to reiterate, it's not all about the money. Two halves don't make a whole. We could accomplish the same thing by taking a full day off and a full day on. There's savings to the district. I'm not in favor of that, but we could. I believe we go to school for a full day, get more accomplished than going two half days. So it's not all about the money. It's twofold. We're spending more and we're getting less. That's what I believe. Thank you. We have a first and we have a second. With no further discussion, we we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carries.
Mr. Stefanik, would you like to give us an update on our school capacity? Thank you, Ms. Edge. Um, on the, or in your packets, uh, you'll see a, an updated school capacity report. The changes um, on the report, yeah, I went back and uh, uh, did not count uh, art and music rooms as potential um, classrooms if uh, class sizes uh, you know, got to be too large. And so we left those rooms um, standing in the schools as, um, as uh, uh, specials classes. Uh, and the, the capacities listed um, were the result of uh, uh, that revision. If the board is comfortable uh, with uh, uh, these capacities as they stand, um, I can uh, move and share them with the uh, uh, planning department. And so then we can all have the same numbers to work from as we make decisions as uh, some of our schools uh, approach and or with this uh, uh, listing, uh, one elementary school actually uh, above the, I'll call it the minimum capacity. Again, we were doing the tours uh, just for the board's information. These capacities are based on a low number for the K through three um, capacities. You have a three student um, flex uh, that's uh, permitted uh, in the K through three classes. Uh, and so the numbers you see are the low numbers with 16 to one, 17 to one, or 18 to one in all the K through three um, classes. All right, concerning the consent agenda, do I have a motion that we approve the consent agenda? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Consent agenda is approved. We have a scheduled work session May 2nd at NAP Professional Learning Center at 4 p.m. Then we will have our monthly Board of Education meeting May 2nd at the historic Currituck County Courthouse at 6.30 that evening. At this time, I'd like to ask for board member comments and superintendent comments. And if we can start with Mr. Croddick. Well, good evening. Um, uh, let's see. This uh, past month, I had uh, visited uh, North Carolina Elementary School on a couple occasions, and uh, then uh, this past weekend as well um, to attend the bazaar, which seemed to be going over well. Um, I toured uh, Moyoc Elementary School, and I'd also like to touch base with uh, this uh, House Bill 96 that is referring to uh, ice recognizing uh, well, what they're trying to do is change some of the wording in the um, law to make Knott's Island recognized as an isolated school, which I believe it is. And hopefully House Bill 96 will be approved because what it will do is it will bring more resources to this school. Um, fortunately, we have eradicated combination classes here and around the county. However, it will prevent future boards if they were ever to have a financial shortfall from combining classes at the school again. It will also possibly bring resources here for other programs that some of the elementary schools have, maybe like music or other things. So I can't think of all of them right in the moment, but it'll be a, a, a really good thing for not only this school, but the district, and it will free up some of the monies that we're having to spend out of local to provide the extra teacher here and other services that are being provided. The state will carry that and it'll free up money for the other schools where some of your children will eventually attend one of the two elementary school, um, middle, school, middle schools or the high school or JP Knapp. So those resources will be able to be reallocated. There's another house bill, it's House Bill 97. And it goes um, into kind of what I was talking about earlier, where we have a transportation situation where one county out of, uh, out of the whole uh, 111 um, school districts were one that faces three challenges. They were very unique. We're not, we don't, we're the only one that faces all three of these. We're long, narrow county making up over 50 plus miles. 
but on the uh, south end of the county, we have to retrieve uh, membership through another county. And on the north end of the county, we have to retrieve membership through another state. So we're the only um, school system that faces that in hopes that we will get uh, House Bill 96 passed, which will change uh, the, um, well, we'll have an exemption as Curtis County Schools, so that when we're not riding our buses at full capacity, 100%, Based on our model, we won't be penalized because right now we're paying $200,000 back. Mm. If we paid out of local funds every $500, we'd be penalized approximately another $200. So it costs us $700 to get what $500 out of pocket would cost us. That's the way the formula works. We got penalized when we raised the salaries of bus drivers, believe it or not. So hopefully, 96, HP 96, isolated schools, and HP 97 um, school. Fund informa will be um, uh, amended for Curtis County Schools. And uh, lastly, I'd like to say um, I am humbled to have been part of um, eradicating combination classes in uh, Nass Island. I know I've been talking about them for a long time, and we have 14 of them in the elementary schools. And just as of January, we had the last instructor here in Nass Island with the help of uh, my fellow board members and the administration. And I'm very thankful that we accomplished that. And with that, I hope everybody has a happy Easter. And God bless Curtuck County. Mr. Stefanik. <coughs> Good evening. Just have a couple of comments uh, to the Board of Education. Uh, thank you uh, with your consent agenda vote, uh, I hope. That is the last uh, step you have to take in uh, uh, providing us with our brand new activity buses. Uh, the contract was in there and hopefully simultaneously the county commissioners are also approving uh, the same contract. Uh, we've got the buses sitting and waiting uh, at the bus company for these uh, uh, contractual agreements to be finalized and uh, according to our representative uh, the new activity buses should be here by the end of the week. Um, so we can uh, utilize them with some of our longer trips that are probably upcoming with our spring sports. Uh, and so uh, much needed, and uh, thank you to the board for um, approving that uh, contract. Uh, also, as you've heard uh, several times up here tonight, there's been comments about the budget. Um, the Currituck schools for the past eh, at, least, at least six or seven years uh, has been operating their annual budget by using um, part of their fund balance. Uh, we're at a point right now uh, where the fund balance does not have enough money into it, in it to match the fund balance that we're using in this current year. So we cannot repeat the draw off the fund balance next year um, with the, uh, the expenditures we're using this year. So we have to look at any ways that uh, we can possibly save some money. Uh, we're also working with the commissioners uh, to try to see if our allocation from the county uh, can be a little bit higher. Uh, to help uh, offset uh, those fund balance dollars. Uh, and to that end, we're gathering input from as many places as we can. Uh, I'm going to uh, pull together um, our uh, teacher representative committee that we have for the district uh, from Knott's Island. Ms. Fentress is uh, that representative. Uh, and we'll pull that uh, teacher group together to get some ideas about uh, what we might be able to do with our budget process as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you for hosting us this evening. We appreciate uh, Knott's Island being uh, fantastic hosts, and we really appreciated all the uh, student presentations. They, they were very um, worthwhile and educational to us. So thank you. So yes, I echo um, Mr. Stefani. Thank you for hosting us. Um, I come over here almost every month, so um, I always enjoy visiting um, over here and um, so we really appreciate um, the great crowd we had. I uh, attended the Math 24 competition with all six elementary schools earlier this uh, last month. And uh, as Keelan mentioned, Shawborough Elementary School swept the contest. I talked with uh, Mrs. Harsh, their coach, so I say congratulations to the students and Mrs. Harsh for their um, great present, uh, their great contest. They did a wonderful job. I attended the anti-bullying workshop for parent information at Currituck County High School um, last week and then also the Moyoc Middle School presentation for students. Uh, it was amazing that, that, that um, Jim did a great job. It was really 
It's really informational. Uh, I visited J.P. Knapp this morning. I attended the Spring into the Arts Festival at Currituck County Middle School weekend before last, I believe. The art was amazing, and there was uh, Currituck County High School Band, the chorus, and Moyoc Middle School Band that I did get to hear. And then we also, as a board, toured Moyoc Middle School and Moyoc Elementary School. So, have a happy Easter. Spring break is coming. Hold on. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'd like to say what a great job those students did tonight. And I'd also like to say for me, it's like coming back home because I am a native of Knott's Island and I went to this school grades one through seven and still have family here. So I thank Knott's Island for hosting this meeting. I have really enjoyed it. This past month, I've had the opportunity to travel to Raleigh with Superintendent Stefanik, and we met with Representative Steinberg. We have he and Bobby Hannig representing us well in Raleigh, and, and as Mr. Croddick said, working hard on a couple of bills that will directly benefit Mount Silent and our schools as a whole. Um, reach out to them with concerns, Bobby Hannig and Bob Steinberg. We are also fortunate to have Ed Goodwin, who is from Chowan. He doesn't directly represent us, but he's close by. And I think the three of them are working really hard for Northeast North Carolina. I'd like to give a shout out to um, Moyoc Elementary School and Shawbar Elementary School. Their recent fundraisers, I think they raised like fifteen dollars to $20,000. And shout out to their parents. Um, they did like a jogathon or something. and amazing the amount of money that they raised. I also had the opportunity to attend the Bully Proofing Youth Program, Jim Basinius. I went to the one for parents and I also went to one at Mayotte Middle School. Usually we talk to the bully and we talk about how it's not nice to do that, blah, blah, blah. But he had a different approach and I know your students saw him and it was how to handle the bully how to make them not be a bully. So I'm hoping that will be a benefit to our students. I'd like to give a shout out to our hunter safety team. They did compete in Columbia this weekend in the district tournament. They got third overall. But the part that I liked the most was they got the sportsmanship award. And when the gentleman was giving out awards, he even commented that they were probably going to have to name that the Curry Tuck Sportsmanship Award because we have received it three out of the last four years. And I do hope that you all have a wonderful Easter. Call us if you need us. Thank you, Ms. Rose. A couple things. I was able to attend the bully proofing um, held at Griggs Elementary for our youth, and that was very informative, and I, I hope the children learned a lot. We have the upcoming Amore Conference that will be held this Saturday, the 6th of April. And that's going to be held at the J.P. Knapp High School, early college rather. And my daughter, Diane Davenport, um, heads this up. And she does this because of her love for the, for the kids. And it's not only for our students, our high school girls at Knapp, it's for the high school girls at Curta County High School as well. And this year, it's titled, This Is Me. Um, and they said, I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be, and this is me. And they have so many activities, and I always attend this event just because I love it, and I love to see the girls have such a good time. When they register, when they come in the door, they have to put their cell phones in a basket. And for, for girls of this age, that's hard for me to do. I can't imagine, you know, high school, student, it's unplugged. So they cannot play on their phones, they can't text their friends, they, they, they're, for a few hours, they're having a good time. And she tries to pair them up with other girls that they don't know that well, maybe to form some new friendships. But they have meditation, sewing, Zumba, yoga, self-defense, and they have a painting class, and they also have a guest speaker that night, Genevieve Dozier. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, we also have our Currituck FFA annual plant sale coming up on April 10th, and I urge everyone to support the FFA and to 
buy some plants. I know everybody's kind of got that spring fever, especially since Saturday, and then it goes from 75 to 45, but <laughs> that's Curry Tuck County for you. So please support everything that we have going on at all of the schools. I hope each and every one of you have a wonderful Easter, and Ms. Gorza, thank you so much for showing us around today at your beautiful school. Um, we really appreciate everything that you did for us this afternoon. Thank you. Do I have a motion that we adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.